If you don't increase what I call your triple S score, you screwed. Hey guys, going on? Megan here. Alright, so today is Saturday, so we're going to talk about Sex Talk Saturday, dating and cheek clapping. Now, you guys remember the video I made, uh, I think it was the first NoFap video, where I explained that pretty much the main reason why humans and animals and every other thing on this planet do the things they do is because we are trying to pass on our genes, right? Every single part of your behavior, the reason you eat, the reason you drink, the reason you breathe, everything you do, whether subconsciously or consciously, is ultimately to pass on your DNA to the next generation, on and so forth, right? Right, and the reason is simple, right? Organisms that didn't pass on their genes to the next generation or that didn't do the behaviors needed to be done in order to pass on their genes are not here. It's that simple. And that obviously brings us to the topic of this video, right? Why females are so picky and why you're going to have a hard time passing on your genes or even clapping cheeks unless you understand this, right? The difference in behavior and motivation between male and female, right? Number one, remember, a woman can only release one egg every 30 days, on average, of course, right? Keep in mind, everything that I talk about is always on average, right? There are always exceptions. So we're not going to talk about twins and all that shit. On average, a woman is only going to release about one egg every 30 days. So her ability to produce a gamete, right, an egg, which contains a genetic material, uh, is limited to the fact that she can only release one every 30 days. Meanwhile, men can release about four billion every 30 days. Look at the drastic difference one egg every 30 days compared to four billion every month right roughly right because remember guys can produce over a thousand sperm cells in one second it takes a woman 30 days for her to produce a gamete so you can already see one of the first reasons why women have evolved to be extremely picky their ability to pass on their genes is extremely limited compared to men and you can also see what men have evolved to be promiscuous as shit, right society hates to admit this but men have evolved to be hoes right because we pumping out these suckers left and right. Four billion in 30 days. Next, right? We can just keep on going, right? Second reason, again, once a woman is pregnant, once that egg is fertilized, she's stuck for nine months. So for nine months, she has to deal with a painful and uncomfortable pregnancy. Meanwhile, look at the parental investment from the guy, right? It's zero months pregnant. He can clap cheeks and just disappear. And his genetic material is going to make it throughout the generations. Meanwhile, she has to hold on to that kid for nine months in her belly. And keep in mind, we live in a modern world. Things are different now. There's birth control and all that stuff. But you got to understand, guys, we were hunters and gatherers for 99% of our existence. Our brains are still adapted to being hunters and gatherers. This is facts, right? Don't think because we live in cities now, our brains are any different. That's not how quickly uh, evolution works, right? So subconsciously, the female brain is still operating under those conditions. Next. High pregnancy caloric costs while she's pregnant. Keep in mind, when a woman is pregnant, her caloric needs go up. Obviously, she has to eat enough food for herself to have enough fat stores and also for the child. Meanwhile, obviously, zero pregnancy caloric costs, right? Because remember, the guy can just clap cheeks and leave. Obviously, it's not recommended. You know, you guys know I'm a big believer of if you knock somebody up, you better stick around and help raise the kid. But again, we're talking about in general from an evolutionary perspective. The guy does not have to increase his caloric needs, you know, especially if he doesn't stick around. Right? So she needs more food, right? more fat, more protein, more carbohydrates, more fruits, more veggies, blah, 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 in order to make it out there in the wild while she's pregnant. Meanwhile, the guy can just disappear. Next, she's vulnerable while pregnant. Obviously, keep in mind, just imagine a pregnant woman in the wild. Unless she's surrounded by a guy that can protect her, unless she's surrounded by a tribe or a group of other women, she is screwed, right? Extremely hard to run from predators, extremely hard to defend herself from threats during those nine months that she's pregnant, right? Not, not during the entire nine months, but you know, you know what I mean, like once the belly is too big. Meanwhile, once again, zero risk while the woman is pregnant, right? Again, he could just disappear. He can still hunt, he can still climb trees, he could still run, he could sprint, he could do whatever the fuck he wants, and his genetic material is still gonna make it down the line. Next, maternal mortality risk, right? Dying at childbirth. Everyone forgets that. That was a thing back in the days, right? Now, obviously, you know, the rates are a lot lower because we have better health care and things like that. But back in the ancient days, this was a huge thing. The woman can go through all of this nonsense, the nine months of pregnancy, the pain, the sleepless nights, all of that stuff, and then boom, die when the kid is born. Meanwhile, once again, zero childbirth risk for the father. If she dies, if he was a deadbeat caveman or deadbeat hunter gatherer or whatever, he could just be like, all right, time to go to the next chick and start all over. So again, this is why the female brain has evolved to be so choosy with the partners and who's clapping their cheeks, even in the age of birth control, right? We're not even done yet, and look at all the risks 
all of the risks that the female has to go to just to pass on her genes. Next, two years breastfeeding. So let's say she does survive childbirth. Now she has to breastfeed for at least two years, right? Which is obviously a pain in the ass. Meanwhile, zero years of breastfeeding for the father. Again, as always, this is assuming that the father is not sticking around. Obviously, if the father sticks around, he has to work harder and things like that to provide for her and the kid. But I'm getting to that in a minute. Here, we're just assuming that the guy claps the cheeks and leaves, right? Again, as she's breastfeeding, more energy costs. Not only she needed more food while she was pregnant, but well, now she also needs a lot of food while she's breastfeeding, obviously. In fact, uh, all the coaches out there know what I'm talking about. If you training a mother who just gave birth, you cannot cut her calories too low. Right? If she says, hey, I want to lose weight, we have to be really careful how low we cut the calories because once she cut the calories too low, she doesn't produce enough milk. Women have to deal with that. So they need to have a constant supply of energy in order to keep feeding the child. Meanwhile, once again, zero breastfeeding caloric cost for the male. Once again, we we imagining a deadbeat ass Goku, right? He clapped her cheeks and disappeared. Next, three years glued to the child for her to pass on her genes. Once that kid is born, she is glued to that child for at least three years, right? Because again, back in the days, you cannot leave a kid running around in the in the jungle or the forest or whatever, right? An eagle can come out of nowhere and pick it up. A snake can grab it. A predator can come. Hyenas, you name it, right? So she's pretty much paralyzed, glued to that kid for at least three years, right? In some cases, more, right? Meanwhile, once again, zero years glued to the child. That's why, unfortunately, we have so many deadbeat dads out there, right? Who just knock women up and disappear. It sucks. But again, it's showing you how different the parental investment is between men and women who want to pass on their genes. Next, she can only have about one kid a year. Once again, we're not talking about twins because that's obviously rare, right? So she can only have one kid a year. Meanwhile, Think about it. A guy can have, theoretically, over 3,000 kids a year, right? If he claps 10 different cheeks a day, right? Obviously, theoretically, right? He can have over 3,000 kids a year, right? He could clap, take a break, clap, take a break, clap. And his body just keeps pumping out these sperm cells, right? Remember, guys, in a two-month, uh, the sperm creation cycle takes about two months. But your body can crank out millions and millions and millions of sperm cells during that period, right? So if he's clapping 10 different women a day... Theoretically, of course, it's not going to happen. He could have over 3,000 kids a year. Meanwhile, she can only have one. In addition to going through all of this BS. Next. No eggs by the time she's 40 to 50, right? By the time she goes through menopause, obviously it varies. And again, there are, there are always exceptions. There are women who got kids past that. But on average, most women are done by the time they're 40 to 50. So that's it. They have a biological clock. Meanwhile, a guy can keep clapping cheeks and pumping our kids. There's no age limit. I think the oldest father is like 100 or, 100 or something years old. I don't know if it's 101 or whatever. But guys constantly pump our sperm cells during their entire lives, as long as he's healthy, of course. Now, keep in mind, the older the guy is, uh, the chances of uh, getting a woman pregnant go down because of issues, you know, issues with sperm quality and things like that. But he's still pumping our sperm cells. And he can still get a woman pregnant even if he's 100 years old. So when you sum all of this up together... The woman can only have about 10 to 70 kids max. And this is assuming she starts very young. You know, in these cultures, that the women start really young as like teenagers and shit, right? So this is assuming best case scenario, she starts very young. She can only have about 10 to 70 kids, right? Not including twins. If you in include twins, of course, the number goes up. In fact, I think the, the most kids a woman ever had was over 60. But yeah, 10 to 70 kids max. And that's, that's if she's lucky. Most women get, back in the days, they got like five, maybe 10 kids. Uh, someone slightly above that, if they got lucky and got twins. But she is limited. Meanwhile, once again, theoretically, a man can have over 300,000 kids, right? If he starts clapping cheeks by the time he's 13, like a lot of cultures, the kids start really young, right? I know it's gross, but hey, you know, can't be ethnocentric. That's their shit. Right? Imagine he starts around 13 and he claps all the way till he's 100. He can have over 300,000 kids. Now, again, obviously, that's not going to happen, but I'm just saying theoretically, right? He has the potential to over 300,000 kids. But once again, he will literally have to clap uh, 10 different cheeks a day for the rest of his life, right? Which, again, is not realistic, but if you look at history, uh, I think the most kids a person had was over 1,000. You know, you want to talk about Genghis Khan, you want to talk about all these emperors and whatever. So, long story short, now you see why women are so picky, right? At least 10 different reasons why. And even though we live in different times, their brains are still programmed to be choosy. Their brains are still programmed to be picky. So that's why I always tell men, if you don't level up, if you don't compete in this day and age, if you don't increase what I call your triple S score, you screwed, right? Because the women are always going to pick the guys at the top, right? And that's why I keep telling you guys over and over again, women scan for security, status, and sexiness subconsciously all around the world, regardless of culture. 
right? Because of the 10 reasons that I mentioned earlier. That's why they want men who are secure, meaning they have a job, they have it together, right? You don't have to be a millionaire, but you got to have it together, right? A place to live, a car, whatever. Again, it depends on the culture. Got to have status. Notice I put two different pictures. You don't have to be a fucking CEO, right? You got to have high relative status, meaning wherever you work or wherever you, wherever you are in life, you can be at the bottom of the hierarchy. It doesn't matter if you're a construction worker. It doesn't matter if you're a mailman, if you're a garbage collector, or if you're CEO. You got to increase your relative status because, again, women scan for that, right? And obviously, you got to increase your sexiness, right? And like I always say, most of us don't look like this, right? 90% of you motherfuckers don't look like this, right? Meaning you have to overcompensate any other things, right? The higher you are on one thing, the less you have to overcompensate on the other. But the lower you are on one thing, the more you have to overcompensate on the other. I'm gonna make a whole separate video going in more detail about this and, and how the model really works, right? The most you could score is a 30, right? 10 out of 10 here, 10 out of 10 here, 10 out of 10 here, right? But that's the beauty of things is you don't have to score in the 30, right? As long as you have at least 50%, as long as you score at least 15, then trust me, you score high enough to be in a drawing. But there you have it, right? That's why women are so choosy and that's why you will never clap cheeks unless you increase your competence, unless you find ways to become attractive to the other sex. Because for every girl that you want to clap out there, there's at least 20 to 30 guys who are waiting in line, right? And she's not going to just hand you over the cheeks unless you have something that the other guys don't, right? Unless there's a thought, of course. But anyway, guys, you get the point. Hope this video helps. Next time, I might actually make a video where I go into more detail about this. But definitely, definitely try to rank yourself and try to increase uh, you know, your score on the triple S model. By the way, it was so cringy when I had to look for these pictures, man. I had to type sexy men, and then my girl walked in, and I was like, oh, shit, now I gotta explain this. <laughs> but anyway, I, I'll, I'll tell you guys the full story in the next video. All right, I'm out of here. All right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workout splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nucleus of Lord. Or you could just buy the share at full price. Alright guys, I'm out of here.